offensive lineman, Edward Vesterinen, also known as Eddie B. <laughs> Questions for Eddie B? So, Eddie, take us back to the beginning. Um, your, your involvement with football, American football. Yeah. W when did that start? How did it come about? I mean, was it popular in Finland? So I started playing football when I was uh, when I was around 14 years old. It's American football is not very popular. Ice hockey, basketball, soccer are the main sports in Finland. And the way I got introduced to football was I was watching YouTube, and then this uh, like a compilation comes up to me like video. I think it was like a big hits compilation. It was like very. It's like it was like a pump up compilation. I thought like, wow, this is really cool. Like, people get to do this. Like, people hitting hard. And then I looked up like the local club team in my city, and then that's how it started. So when did it become okay? I'm just gonna try this for fun, and I could actually go to America and play it in college. I mean, when when did that start? Did did you even dream of that initially? Initially, no. It was I was playing football just for fun. So after after a couple of years of playing, I, was, I started playing with the men's team, and everyone was telling me that you need to you need to go to, like overseas to USA play football because you're really good at this. That's how I got into you know having dreams like this. How many games did you play? How many players did you? I mean, I'm sure it was probably <coughs> difficult to, uh, to to play because there probably weren't that many teams. Yeah, I mean, um, I think when I started playing, uh, we call like under 15 years old, like the league. I think there was like seven, eight teams. It was we had we played 11 versus 11 football, but but later on, once I, once I turned um, 16, I got the chance to play with the men's team, and they had more like more teams. It was more competitive, and that's how I got to get better. Anybody else you play with over here? Over here. from Finland over here playing? In yes, States. my uh, my one friend, uh, Olaus Alinen, he, he started at Alabama now in January. We we played in the, we played against in the, with the men's teams. He played on a different team and we also played for a junior national team together. So we're pretty good friends and we stay in contact with him. Which was tough, learning English or learning football rules and Latin lingo? I mean, uh, English is not that hard to learn uh, because every all the movies I look at and all the games I played and English caught up very fast. But I think the football, the details, it was very. I didn't. I didn't know how much I didn't know about football, so it was. It was kind of like hard maybe at the beginning to really you get into. You what yeah. Was the, what was the best movie that taught you English? Best movie that taught me English? I mean, I like Forrest Gump. That's that's a good one. Yes. I'm sure a lot of them probably taught you cuss words. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. It's an American swearing. Yeah. So were you, you were part of Brandon Collier's tour? Yes, I was part of, yeah. When did you learn about that? How did, how did you get involved with that? So the way I got involved with uh, Brandon Collier, the PPI, was that I heard that he was uh, he had a camp in Helsinki and there was people who contacted me and tell, told me you should go to this camp. Then I went to the camp, I did pretty well, I ran fast, I was pretty ag agile and he saw that I have a lot of potential and that's how he, he got me onto the tour to come here to the United States. What was the recruiting process like to you? I mean, like, did, did you, when somebody from West Virginia came to talk to you, did you know what West Virginia was? Did it was it was hard at the beginning. I did not know what I was getting into. I mean, it started. Um, my first offer was to Coastal Carolina, but then the coaching staff changed and they dropped me. And I didn't understand how the business world of this went, and I was kind of upset. But I just kept working, and I think Brandon helped me a lot. I had I could rely on him. You know, it's it was hard to. In the, in the beginning to understand what the recruiting process was, but I had a lot of help. Sort of differentiating between the teams with divisions and all that. 
Did you understand the difference between Power Five and Group Five? Yes, yes, I understand. I was, I was looking at the stadium capacity. That's how. Okay. That's, that's how different. differential everything. So one's bigger than the yeah. other. Okay, this one must. Okay, be they must have more money, budget money. So. There you go. <laughs> that's how it went. So you get over here and it starts. What any shock factor when you're playing at this level? I mean, is it entirely different than what you did, just in terms of skill and? power and size than what you were doing in Finland? So back in Finland, I played with big people, like older men, like from 20 to 30 years old men, big people. But the thing I really noticed at first was the speed. The I had, when I, I remember my first rep and I realized how fast the ball was snapped and I had to pay attention to it. And I realized the all line moved very more quickly and agile. So the, the speed of the game was the biggest thing that I had to adapt to. Is there a different style in Finland? I mean, it, it, obviously here in America, it's offense and throwing the ball and you know everything like that. Is it is Finnish different? No, I think it's the same. There's a lot of people who have had uh, college experience, and they, I've heard like they have a red like offenses. They have spread. And some people play wing T. Um, it's about the same, just the speed of the game is very different. Explain it to your family or your parents. Um, are they up to speed on what you're doing and when they watch you maybe on TV or whatnot, uh, do they understand what you're doing? I mean, um, it's hard to really, uh, for them to understand what I'm doing, but they see all the pictures I send them and videos they see me on TV, they know I'm working hard. and. I mean, they've they've never been here to visit me, so I really hope that that day comes and they will get to see what kind of facility we have and fans. But I think they they my parents they watch me play back home and I think they they do have some understanding what what they I do. Had an opportunity to watch the game live on television. Yes, my my mom she always stays up during the night. It's like 2 a.m. 3 a.m. She stays up watches all my games. Okay. Does she, is she starting to understand it and get it? Um, what, how all the things, yeah. the intricacies of the game, how it all works? I think, yeah, she understands that there's four downs and stuff like maybe not so deep, but uh, yeah, maybe, you know, like a general general view of the game, yeah. yeah so you have to explain a lot to her and say this is why we do what we do. Yes, maybe not so much like situational, just to like say like, okay, maybe like if a game, something happens, I explain, okay, this happened and that. But they do have a general view of the game. Has there been any talks or any plans for them to visit in the immediate? Yes, they have. They have plans to visit uh, probably this year or yeah. It's a big leap of faith for you to do that to come here unknown. I mean, you, you knew a little bit about this. Obviously, you did a little bit of research, but I'm sure your parents are like, I mean, you're going all the way across the world here to play. Football. Yeah, I mean, uh, I th I thought I had to. I had to show my parents that that I am willing to take the step to be independent and create my like chase my dreams and maybe step aside from their shelter and you know experience some new things. And that's not the typical Finland dream for a kid growing up to be a, a college football player or a pro football player, is it? No, not very. There's been you can count. There's probably been like six, seven guys playing at Power Five level, so. I had I had two friends. One played at Eastern Eastern Michigan. One played at Colorado, and they were my mentors. They they told me wh how the process is going to be like and what to do and how to get playing time. So they helped me a lot. And I'm sure the other kids that you grew up with are like, why or where are you going? What are you doing? Did you get some of that? Yeah, I did get some of that. Like from. The people who don't know what football is, yeah, it's, it's it was hard to explain how like how big football really is here because like no one knows about football back home and that's the biggest. I think it's shame that uh, we don't have the same popularity back home. How have you improved since you got here in the last couple of years? I think uh, the last couple of years since I've been here, I've I've improved in my consistency and I think the details of uh, my technique, the situational awareness. I think I'm more able to talk about like football with my coaches and 
understand the scheme we're doing and stuff like that. I think I've made a big steps forward. Did you have to do some mandatory oh, sorry. on YouTube that one day and that video doesn't pop up? What was the plan for you? What do you think you would be doing? What I was doing, I would, I would be probably back home going to university or, or I don't really know. It's, it's hard to it's hard to say that what what could have came of that. Right. It's hard. And then um, your your recruiting was further complicated because of the mandatory military service, and I believe you got out of that, right? Yes. But also, you were maybe allowed to enroll one year. I think the pandemic maybe altered things, and you enrolled a little bit later. You know your story way better than me. Can you kind of fill those blanks in? Yeah. So after high school, um, I had to do my mandatory military service in Finland. I wanted to get it out the way because you have to do it before you turn 30 years old. So during that time, I, w I went to a special like a sports academy or like a sports uh, sports um, what is it called like um, units sports units, and they they gave me the possibility of training and having having time to go practice and stuff like that. But then the COVID COVID hit and. Um, it was very depressing at the beginning because I thought all my dreams are gonna be gone. When that COVID happened, I had um, I had a visit to UMass before uh, COVID happened, and after that, I come back home. Then there's news about COVID, and they they stopped talking to me. And I, I thought like it was over, like they're not gonna recruit guys from Europe now because of COVID. But then I just kept working hard and. During the summer, I had more interest, which led to me come here. Wild workout videos online, if I remember correctly, right? Yes. Were you trying to like make sure people remembered you and like you can't come over, but like they can still get a look at what you're doing and how fast and strong you are too? Yeah, I think uh, Twitter really helped me market myself. I think Twitter made the world much much smaller because. Like coaches can actually see my video, my workouts. That was my one, one most important way that I got in front of coaches, just so that they saw me work out and stuff like that. You talking about military? Just today, Finland joined. NATO. Yes. Uh, yeah. What does that mean to you? I mean, uh, obviously, we don't think you know that the war that's going on over there, and you share a, a Russian border. Yes. Uh, that means to me uh, peace and calm, because the the time when Russian had the attack on Ukraine that uh, ma that made us Finnish people realize that we might be next because they they are willing to attack their neighbor countries and as our country we're not we were not in officially in NATO so we started we started the process to get more of a how do you say so that Russia has a bigger leap. Like if they attack us, they will attack everyone. So that brings me a lot of peace, peace of mind. Yes, very, very important. I like the long summer. Usually our summer is from June to late, maybe July or June beginning of, June, yeah, <laughs> uh, beginning of August. So I really like the long summer here. I think I'm getting maybe too soft, like maybe <laughs> <laughs> too too used to the good weather here that I go back home, it's too cold. But I, I think I've seen too much snow for my life. So. In addition to the football that you're learning about, are there other American things or just this side of the world things you're picking up on food, movies, music, stuff like that, that it's more common now, but maybe it was new to you before and you've developed a taste or a preference for that. I think uh, I really started liking barbecue. That's something Americans are very, very good at barbecue. And uh, I think about uh, American culture, I think about uh, how, uh, how more socializing people are. And uh, small talk is very, very more popular. Uh, I would say back home, it's we keep to ourselves, and uh, the culture is a bit different than here. So I, I like the more openness here. Uh, Finnish culture to your locker room or your friends or anything like that about I don't know stuff that you're used to. There are comforts of home that 
you don't want yeah. to get rid of quite yet. Man, I have um, one of my teammates. He he asks me every day. He wants to learn Finnish. I tell him like every day new words, and now we're we're able to say hi, how are you, like good, how are you, good. Like then we can like talk about what are we eating today. So it's really nice to have like someone who's very curious about the language. So I can I can you know teach him about the, uh, my culture and also. My coach, he he asked me during the last season to give a presentation about the word sisu. Sisu is a uh, Finnish word that cannot be translated into English because it uh, it involves a lot of words together like courage, relentlessness, and not not willing to you know let down. It's it was, it's something about you know always being relentless when you're faced with a situa like unexpected situation. Who are the players that helped you with the language barrier? Obviously you help guys learn Finnish. Who were the guys that, you know, helped you understand things that maybe the slang that we speak that you have a tough time understanding? I think I've had a, I've had a lot of teammates help me, but I would say Jalen Thornton, he was my guy I could lean on my first year. He took me kind of a, like under his wing. He taught me how things work here, and like they, it was funny when my teammates like they were talking. Sometimes I couldn't understand what they were saying, so I was kind of like ha ha ha, yeah, just ha ha laughing. So maybe later on I started understanding what they were saying. Now you understand. Yeah, now now it's two years, so yeah. And now you can do it to them a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You got a couple of European teammates who are here as well. Yeah. I mean, do you guys, you know, talk amongst yourselves? I mean, it's different languages, so you, you got to get you find commonality. But uh, you know, what is it uh, that you guys share? Yeah, we share the same experience of being far away from home and the I would say the hard process of coming up here. And it's there's something there's something special about it. It's like. My roommate Victor, mm -hmm. I think he really like us being roommates since the first year really helped me like feel more feel more at home and like more comfortable here. And Ari, no, I'm talking about uh, Jairo. I love I love Jairo. Like the, we can like, we play defense. He's he's behind me, so I feel like we have this better chemistry and like I always try to hyping hype him up and he hypes me up. It's like a mutual love for each other because we know how hard it was coming here and then Eric, you know, we, we try we try to show him the how it works here and like give him all the support we can. You know, like holidays coming up Easter, a lot of your guys are maybe going out and going home. You're here. <coughs> Christmas, you're you're here. Um, different holidays. Who who are you with? What do you do? My uh, my first year, I I relied on my teammates. I remember last year, um, my first year, I went to spend Easter at the uh, Trail and Davis house. Okay. It was very nice to see, get the real experience of how how Americans celebrate. Right. In uh, I can't remember what it was a small town in Ohio. It was it was very nice, but usually I I uh, I spend time with the teammates who also. I don't have any like anywhere to go to, so we have our own thing going on. Mm -hmm. Do you get home much at all? I do go home. Uh, I'm going home this follow next uh, May. Mm -hmm. I'm going home for three weeks. And where do you still teammate you're teaching Finnish to? Uh, I'm t teaching uh, Finnish to Taurus Simmons. Okay, and then Coach Jackson, you were telling about Sisu. Yes. How did that come up in conversation? Uh, I think he read it. He read about it in a book, and he knew what it meant. But he wanted me to tell my teammates what it means and how how you need to finish things, how you cannot let, let people down, how you need to have courage in unexpected situations. He wanted me to like bring people up. Yes, I do. I do. St I brought my uh, soprano saxophone from back home. I do play, especially during summer when I have time. But I wish I had more time. But it's it's nice. Who's your it's favorite saxophone player? Uh, I don't really know. It's uh, Sonny Rollins. You ever heard of him? No. Saxophone Colossus. 
Alright. All jazz guys. Yep. John's a music. Well, yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.